Now that we know about the lectures, next up are the assignments. And you'll find that the assignments tie into the stuff covered in the lectures. That's why they're grouped the way that they're grouped. So the idea is watch those two lectures you're looking at on the screen there, manipulating CSS part one and then part two. And then once you've done that, you'll be able to do the build a bot assignment. So let's take a look at this. Now, when you see this, it's stuff that you're probably not going to be familiar with yet. So don't get sidetracked by that and trying to figure out what the assignment's about because you're probably not ready for that just yet. That's okay. So here's the basic layout. They're all laid out exactly the same. We have the overview, the skills are being tested, which lectures are going to be involved that you would have to have watched before doing this, and then the instructions, and they're very specific instructions. They're bullet pointed and organized to where it's like a checklist. And I want you to think of me as your client. I hired you to build me a website, and these are my specifications, and you need to do them to my specifications. If you do that, you'll find that you'll get easy high scores because the rubric is just basically a checklist. Did you do this? Did you do that? Right? So there's all the structure there. And then this is the, ba the basic content. Then below we have the advanced content. I know it's right there where you can see it, but I'm going to read it just because I want to make sure that you understand where I'm coming from here. And I kind of talked about this in the previous video. In the real world, a real programmer has to be good at researching online. The advanced content section is meant to prepare you for that. Below is a list of a few items that purposely aren't fully or even at all covered in the lecture videos. The intent is to get you used to the idea of taking what you know and branching out through a little bit of research online, just like the real post school world, right? And then I got a couple resources there for you, the Mozilla Developer Network and then W3 Schools. So you can click on that to do a little bit of the digging that you might need to help you do the following. But there are two things there. Correctly implement the following advanced content items onto your page or site. And then I'm not going to bother reading what those are because you may look at that and go, I don't have any idea how to do that, which is okay because we haven't learned that yet. But that's the basic idea there, right? So you'll see in the basic content, sometimes I'll even have a picture here to show you what I'm looking for, roughly what I'm wanting the site to look like. And again, I don't need you to build yours to look exactly like mine, but I need you to stick to the structure that's outlined in the bullet points here, right? And so I'm hoping that you have your own design style and I do give you freedom for the CSS because that's part of what you're learning is to be a better visual interface person. That's what a big part of JavaScript's all about. Anyway, so once you've done the basic and the advanced content, what I have down here is actually a demo. It's a live version that I built myself and I run through it. They're usually two or three minutes long and it's showing you exactly what I'm expecting as far as the functioning of the site. So if there's any confusion or you need clarity on one of the bullet points in the instructions, well, when you watch the demo, you'll know exactly what I'm expecting. And then there's information about testing your code. And then this last piece down here, submission details. I know it looks a lot and scary, and it's got this big warning there, failure to follow can lead to zero on, ass on assignment. I know that seems like, wow, Jeff's a jerk. He's going to try to fail us. I don't want to do that. I really don't. The problem is, if you don't follow those instructions, then I will physically be unable to grade your code or your homework because those submission instructions are there really to protect you so that everything I need to actually grade your assignment is present because if it's not I can't grade it and so you'll end up getting a zero and nobody wants that including me I know you don't want it I don't want it so please make sure you follow the instructions on the assignment last but certainly not least we have the rubric right and they're all very similar and they're very detailed okay and you'll see here you get 27 points out of 134 just for submitting it on time, right? Assignments have a grace period, most of them. There's a few exceptions, but generally speaking, assignments have a grace period of one week. But as you can see, you lose a big chunk of points if you take advantage of that grace period. But I know life happens sometimes and you might miss a deadline. So it's okay if you get it in before the lock date, you'll just lose some points there. The other thing you'll notice at the very bottom, the advanced content we talked about earlier, that portion of your grade is also 27 points. So between those two things, that's like 40% of your grade. It's a huge chunk. So just doing it on time and then doing the stuff that you're supposed to do is 40% of your grade, right? So don't forget to do the advanced content. You also notice one other thing. In this particular assignment, there are two advanced content items. If you only do one of them, you get 10 points. And it doesn't matter which one you did. If you only did one, you only get 10 points. In order to get the full points there, you got to do them both. And you might notice that 27 is 
17 points for doing the second one and 10 points for doing the first one. When there are three, the scale is even more exponential. So the whole point there is hopefully to motivate you to make sure you do all of them, right? Another thing that's a real easy set of points to get at the very top there or next to the top is proper URL submission. Every single assignment tells you exactly what I want the URL to look like. And if you do that, 10 points. If you don't, you lose points. And the reason for that, by the way, is because in the real world, the URL matters, right? It's what you put on your advertisement and it's what you put on your print ad and, and on your social media, and it's what people will know you by. And so you have to make sure the URLs are correct. And then the rest, you'll see the bullet points from basic content, bullet point one, two, three, and four. And if you just scroll back up here and you'll see that's bullet point one, two, three, and four. If you did those things, you get the points. That's everything. That's how the assignments are structured and they're all structured exactly like this. So that's it for this video. On the next one, we'll talk briefly about the wrap-up section at the end of each module. We'll see you in that one, folks.